A shocking poll from Rasmussen now indicates that 31 percent of likely U.S. voters believe that a civil war is coming within the next five years. This is shocking, but also confirming in many ways, because, of course, people like myself have been warning about civil war for several years. Uh, many others out there, like uh, James White, Northwest Liberty News, you know, Dave Hodges of the Common Sense Show, uh, who else? Of course, Alex Jones at InfoWars, many other people. You know, allnewspipeline.com, Steve Quayle. A lot of people out there have been warning about the coming civil war. And yet we've been told by, you know, critics trying to, trying to shut down the independent media. They're like, oh, it's impossible. There's not, never going to be a civil war. They say, oh, Americans are too lazy to fight. There's not going to be a civil war. There might be a civil disagreement about Pop-Tarts on your uh, living room couch as you're watching, you know, dumbed down daytime TV for illiterate morons, also called The View. But there's not going to be a civil war, they say, because Americans are too lazy, too obese. Like, even if they try to pick up a gun and walk outside their house to, to shoot somebody, they'd get tired before they made it to the end of the street. This is what we've been told, that there's not going to be a civil war. But here's what they're, they're wrong about. Um, according to the poll, of course, 31%, almost a third of Americans, believe there will be a civil war. And the thing is, a civil war doesn't require everybody who's obese to get out of their couch, get off the couch, and, and go out into the streets with, with guns. That's not what a civil war looks like. A civil war may only involve 1% of the population, or 2%, or 3%. It doesn't involve everybody. And a civil war will likely be leftists going door to door trying to execute conservatives because that's part of their plan, as I'll explain here, and then being met with armed homeowners who are shooting back. So civil war, believe it or not, it doesn't even require conservatives to leave their homes. All it requires is for them to be armed and to have those guns at the ready when these radical left-wing extremists who, you know, they're communists and they're their cultural revolution, uh, I don't know, young, young people who are out there mobile, uh, the radical left-wing, you know, Antifa domestic terrorists, they, they go to house to house, and conservatives just have to have their firearms ready and shoot, shoot back. And by the way, this is why you need an AR-15. Uh, if it's legal to own, wherever you are, you should own uh, more than one, frankly, because you're going to need to probably shoot at mobs of people, you know, large groups who are trying to uh, murder you, who are trying to break into your home, steal everything you have, beat you, torture you, murder you, rape you, depending on who you are, uh, kill your dog, you know, everything. Just shoot you and your family members in front of you, whatever. You're going to need to defend yourself, and an AR-15 happens to be very, uh, very effective at achieving that important goal of self-defense. So civil war, think about it, a third of Americans now see a civil war as likely to happen in the next five years. That's a shocking result because a year ago, I think very few people thought that. It might have been 5% or less. Now it's almost a third. So what has caused that change in perception? It's that people are seeing the unhinged left and how radical the left has become. Left-wing radicals calling for violence, calling for shootings of conservatives in, in you know, public restaurants and movie theaters and gas stations and so on, calling for violence, threatening to firebomb conservative targets. Radical, unhinged leftists, like Madonna saying that she, she thought about blowing up the White House and, and Kathy Griffin chopping off Trump's head you know, in effigy and showing that and, and you know, implying that Trump should be executed. Uh, many other examples of this. Maxine Waters running around basically inciting mob violence, which is a felony uh, crime in America as well. There are so many examples of the left becoming deranged and unhinged and just, just out of their minds insane. And yet pursuing violence as in Antifa. The left is inciting the civil war. And of course, the left-wing media is complicit in it. They're pushing it. They want to see violence. The left-wing media wants a civil war. They want chaos because they need to destabilize 
the country since they can't control the White House and the Supreme Court right now. So they are trying to destabilize through civil war. This is why the, the left-wing media is engaged in journo-terrorism. This is why they are complicit and that they, some, some of those uh, terrorists who are pretending to be journalists should, in my opinion, be arrested and indicted for uh, in, inciting violence and, you know, slandering. Look, they're just fake news. And, and they are traitors to America. And they are trying to foment a situation where America is destroyed from within, overrun, invaded with foreign nationals, and so on. So the media is not the media anymore. The media is the enemy of the American people. The media is the enemy of the nation of the United States of America. And that's why these so-called journalists are actually um, enemy combatants, you might say, who, who are actively conspiring against America to try to destroy America from within. So, with all this said, what is the answer for people like you and I who care about America and we, we love our country, we want to protect our country, we want to protect our borders? What is the answer? And you may not like me to say this, you may not want to hear this, but the answer is that sooner or later you're going to have to fight to defend your nation. You're going to have to fight to defend your, your family, your community, your, your house, your, you know, your household, uh, your business, perhaps. You're going to have to fight. They are going to go on a crusade of mass murder, mayhem, to try to overthrow this nation, and you will not be able to negotiate with them. You won't be able to reason with them. You can't talk them out of their plans. They are insane. You can only stop them using kinetic weapons. Weapons which are, by the way, constitutionally protected for this very purpose. And you will be joined by many, many law enforcement officers and National Guard troops and perhaps uh, you know, retired military veterans, retired cops, all kinds of people who are also defending their nation, your nation, our nation. And we're doing it together in the only method that is available to us after having exhausted every method. We, we went to the voting booths, you know, we elected President Trump for a change, and then the left decided that they weren't going to recognize the outcome of that election because they didn't win. And so they despise democracy and they hate Donald Trump, so they have, they're trying to overthrow the country. Well, we the people actually do have the right, if attacked, if invaded, if threatened, if violence is being committed against us, we have the right collectively to uh, pick up arms and to deploy those tools in defense of our nation and our lives and our communities and so on. And you will likely have to be part of that in some way. Even if you don't know how to run a firearm, you might need to help supply ammunition to pro-America forces, even sheriff's deputies, what have you. You might need to help coordinate you might need to eavesdrop on the enemy and report their activities. You might need to uh, be engaged in all kinds of logistics supply, so supplying food, for example, to pro-America forces, supplying water, water filters. Think about all the survival supplies that, that a nation needs in a time of war to defend itself. All, all the, you know, the water filters, the emergency first aid, the communications equipment, all the logistics. Think about a massive, almost what you might call a guerrilla self-defense initiative. That, you know, a red dawn scenario, they're attacking America, but the American people are fighting back against this invasion to save their country. And they're doing so with a massive network of patriots who need supplies, frankly, in order to be able to operate. And even if you're not picking up a rifle, you will need to help supply our troops, our, our you know, defensive operators who are trying to save America and, and frankly, terminate the, you know, the, the enemy that's trying to destroy our country. So, so think about this. You will likely be called upon. Maybe you'll be called upon by God. I mean, maybe you'll have a calling that comes to you. Through some, through some d divine recognition or awakening. I don't know. 
or you might be called upon because of uh, friends or colleagues or because the violence comes to you or because one of your friends gets executed in the streets because that, that friend happens to be a Trump supporter and you will be called upon, I believe, to defend this nation. And when that day comes, I want you to be mentally prepared and I want you to be committed to defending this nation. You're going to have to probably engage in activities that you never imagined you would ever face in your life. You're probably going to see things and perhaps even do things that you just could never have thought that you, you would be see, seeing or doing. And yet everything is at stake. And if you're not willing to stand up and defend your nation, then you might as well just, you know, commit suicide because the nation will commit suicide if too many people sit back and do nothing. This is a do or die moment for America. This is fight for survival or be overrun and murdered. That's where we are. It's a realization that you need to come to very quickly. Because right now, there's a calm time right now. It seems kind of calm before the, the open warfare in the streets. It seems calm. But underlying that, that apparent calm is an invasion plan taking place right now. It's underway. It's being accelerated right now. The media is part of it. They're pushing it. And Democrats, if they were to seize control of anything right now, the House, the Senate, or the White House, or the Supreme Court, they would be disassembling, you know, dismantling America with such rapid pace uh, activities that it'd be a whirlwind. You, you'd be blown away. They have dropped the facade of trying to fake like they're Americans. They have, have dropped any pretense of being people who are reasonable or who want to get along and cooperate or who love America or who are willing to defend the Constitution. They've dropped all that. They are now at war with America. They want America to be overrun. They want to see conservatives murdered and executed. They want to see President Trump assassinated, removed from office. They want to see conservative targets firebombed, shot up, murdered, you name it. They, this is now in the open. This is what leftists are demanding. So this is, this is coming, and you need to be ready to use the tools that are constitutionally protected in defense of your nation or to support those who are willing to use those tools. We have a lot of people who are fed up with what's happening, a lot of people who right now are willing to fight for their nation, a lot of active duty military, retired military, a lot of law enforcement officials, a lot of patriots right now who are willing to fight for their country. And they're going to need your help. Because, oh, let me mention one more thing. The, the United Nations will be invading America under this plan. That's been part of it from, well, going years back. This is all about a United Nations takeover. And the way this will happen is they, they will engineer shootings and social chaos, and then they'll say, well, gosh, we need UN peacekeepers. They'll say, peacekeepers? No, you mean invading enemy forces who will come to America and try to confiscate guns door to door across cities and states. The United Nations will be one occupying force at the same time that radical left-wing domestic terrorists are a domestic enemy force at the same time that our borders are being overrun with hundreds of thousands of people just flooding into the country on command. This is a three-pronged war that will be taking place. And it will be up to Americans. I'm, I'm talking about law-abiding patriots, veterans, law enforcement officers, and so on, to, of course, utterly eliminate the invading United Nations troops, to utterly eliminate and uh, halt the Antifa domestic terrorists, and at the same time to protect the borders and halt the mass wave of invading uh, able-bodied young men, military-aged men, who, are, who will be streaming across the border, pretending to be children, but of course it's a military invasion. So there, there are three fronts to this war. And depending on where you are geographically, you may be uh, called to action in, in different fronts. Like, for example, those of you who are in Eastern California, or Northern California, Eastern Oregon, Eastern Washington, 
your job will be to eliminate the Antifa domestic terrorists and radical anti-American left-wing uh, violent terrorist groups. That's your job. You'll probably need to overthrow Sacramento. You'll need to push into the radical left-wing cities. You know, you'll need to, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe deal with some of what's happening with the, the, the tech giants there. But th that's your front there, you know, California, Oregon, Washington. Those of us in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, we're going to have to deal with the border big time. And those of you in New York, New Jersey, East Coast, and, and other similar areas are probably going to have to deal with United Nations troops. I mean, depending on where they, they come in, they're probably going to come in on the East Coast for the most part, and that's your front. So you see how the, the, the nation is going to be facing three fronts in the coming war. In fact, I should probably do another video just about the three-front war. Yeah, I'm going to do that just to try to explain all this. Uh, and then those of you in places like Wyoming and Montana and uh, the you know, middle America, uh, you're going to be called upon to, to uh, travel to these front lines to help other pro-America forces that are in places like California and Oregon to, of course, defend our nation. So, you know, look, it's coming. And you need to be prepared mentally and spiritually and also in terms of a skill set. You need to be prepared for this because this is happening. Civil war is now extremely likely. All I can say is, you know, pray for the survival of our country. I pray for your safety and I ask you to pray for mine. You need to get a concealed carry permit. You need to get training in the safe deployment and usage, uh, reloading and cleaning and everything of, of firearms. You need to be able, if you're able-bodied, you need to be able to run a pistol at minimum, and you need to be able to run a rifle uh, if, you, if you hope to help defend your nation. And if you can't do that, then get some prepping gear and be ready to help supply the logistics of the pro-America forces who are going to need emergency first aid, you know, uh, ammunition, water filters, binoculars, laser range finders. You know, our long-range shooters need to be able to range their targets. But my, my point is, you know, I'm not going to be on the front lines. I'm going to be working on the information sharing and sharing intelligence, supporting our troops, I mean, for God's sake, you know, I'm almost 50 years old. I'm not a 19-year-old soldier here. But I believe that, that the most important role that I can pursue is to help get information into the hands of people who need it, who can defend this country. And I will also help local law enforcement with ammunition and, you know, what other gear I have. I share some of my rifles and so on. I can do uh, weapons maintenance for uh, law enforcement forces who need, you know, Maybe they need better sites. I've got red dot sites, you know, things like that. I can, I can help in many ways. So think about the ways that you can help defend your country because you're probably going to be called upon to do that. It's coming. Read my website, civilwar.news, and also, of course, check out reel.video launching soon. Reel.video is the alternative to YouTube where you can post videos that are pro-America. So check it all out at at Real.Video. Thanks for listening. Learn more at HealthRangerReport.com. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at HealthRangerStore.com for the world's largest selection of lab-verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at HealthRangerStore.com. <laughs>